We're looking at sort of a generic lumen of the intestinal tract, uh, but in reality these layers can be found uh, throughout the digestive system. Um, these villi here in this intestine represent the mucosa. So the mucosa is epithelial tissue and the accompanying um, ureter connective tissue on the inside, which we refer to as the lamina propria. Now, as we travel down here, we see a bit of smooth muscle. This is referred to as the muscularis mucosi, and that separates the mucosa from the next layer, which is called the submucosa. The submucosa typically has the larger blood vessels and nerves associated with it. And um, beyond the submucosa is smooth muscle. Uh, typically, we have circular muscle first. This is um, followed by longitudinal muscle. So circular muscle, longitudinal muscle together are referred to as muscularis externus. Now, here is the serosa. This is visceral peritoneum, and um, it typically has simple squamous epithelial tissue associated with it. Some of the, the organs of the elementary canal are retroperitoneal, however, and therefore would not have the um, visceral peritoneum. Rather, they simply have um, connective tissue, specifically a realer connective tissue, in which case it's referred to as adventitia. Let's take a look at a couple other structures here. Now, this green structure is actually part of the lymphatic system. This is referred to as the lacteal, and it courses along with blood vessels in the villus. Its job is to absorb fats from the digestive process in the small intestine. In the ileum in particular, we find these large collections of lymphatic tissues, which are referred to as Peyer's patches. And these, of course, are there to ward off bacteria and fight infections. Now, in the duodenum, we find glands. And these particular glands are referred to as duodenal glands. The old name was Brunner's glands. And they can sometimes travel even into the um, mucosa, although they're typically found in the submucosa. The duodenal glands produce an alkaline mucus that help to neutralize acidic chyme. So in general, this is kind of a generic model of the intestines, a little bit of everything here. Uh, so if I found the duodenal glands, I would be in the duodenum. If I found an abundance of Peyer's patches, I would be in the ileum. If I found neither, I would probably be in the jejunum. Another way you can tell is by the abundance of goblet cells, re represented by little blue dots here. The goblet cells are least common in the duodenum. They're more and more abundant as we go deeper into the intestine. So the most, I would say, in the ileum, then the second most in the jejunum, and the least in the uh, duodenum. The large intestine is going to look very similar to this, except that the villi will appear to be cropped. So it's almost as if the villi have a haircut. Again, we would not find, typically, Peyer's patches in the ileum.